This is Press the World News. Time now for the news review section. According to U.S. media, the number of civilian fatalities in Washington's airstrike campaigns in West Asia has been drastically undercounted. The New York Times says it has obtained secret Pentagon documents that show U.S. air raids in the region have killed thousands of civilians, including children. It also criticized the flawed nature of U.S. intelligence and the country's scant accountability. According to the Times report, many victims of the U.S. air raids have become disabled, while only a dozen of them have been compensated. It also notes that there are no records of disciplinary measures in the documents. Over the past five years, the U.S. Army has carried out more than 50,000 airstrikes against different Muslim countries, uh, namely Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. Allow me to invite uh, my guests now to say, uh, get their insight and contribution on this. So Barry Grossman, international lawyer and political analyst, joining me from Bali. We'll also have John White, writer and political analyst in Edinburgh. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Now, Barry, you're, you're a lawyer, so what's the punishment for this? I mean, a country uh, taking its drones all the way to the other side of the planet, and based on flawed intelligence, they carry out some uh, operation. They take the lives of innocent kids and women, and then little or no accountability, little or no compensation. Well, look, what's commonly misunderstood is that international law is a bit of a toothless tiger. Uh, there are enforcement mechanisms. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, the only time people are held accountable is when uh, there's the political will uh, to hold them accountable with that political will uh, coming primarily from Atlantic world nations uh, uh, that are responsible for carrying out these crimes. Uh, so in that sense, I wouldn't be holding my breath uh, waiting for punishment or for that matter compensation to the extent that the American military does compensate people in what we can loosely call West Asia. Um, you know, the going price they seem to put on a head as though they were cattle, is about $1,000 and a few goats, okay? Which is very different than the price they put on an American head uh, back uh, in mainland United States when somebody is injured or dies as a result of the negligence of another party or, or even a, a corporate defendant. Uh, so we need to keep all of this very much in mind. As for the numbers, of course, it's been known for a long time that the numbers are much, much higher uh, than uh, we're being admitted to. And th that shouldn't be surprising since they about with this concept within their draw program that they call a signature strike, which basically means that any time uh, they identify uh, somebody who fits the profile for a strike, anyone who's in their vicinity is also deemed uh, to fit the profile. And it's not like they're necessarily going out and targeting known individuals and confirming their identity. Uh, this is all done on a very almost loosened basis, uh, based on intelligence assurances that these are bad men and women, mm -hmm. and they kill them on that basis. These are extra judicial executions carried out at a very high cost uh, 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 through hellfire missiles in the sort. Uh, that are fired from drones and, uh, and other airborne platforms. Uh, so, it's a surprise to anyone, uh, given uh, the lack of any real incentive to, first of all, satisfy themselves who they're actually targeting, and that they committed crimes which they're accused of, some sort of an immediate threat to the United States. Uh, it, it ought not to come as any great surprise to people that there are a lot of people and there have been a lot of people targeted and killed in the loosest possible way. And we repeatedly see information about this coming out, as is the case right now with this Times article, but it's not new information. We've known for a long time through NGOs and other people mm -hmm. that the actual number of civilian casualties is much, much higher than the U.S. military or the U.S. government uh, is ever willing to admit. And they do scarcely little when it comes to um, or punishing anybody who, who's responsible 
or when it comes to compensating people. It was only, I think, last week there was news that the military uh, um, um, tribunal, appropriate military tribunal, found that the the drone strike done in the final couple of days of the evacuation from Afghanistan. Kabul took out it from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. That took out an entire family. Um, was in fact done in error, but but chose not to impose any punishment on those exactly. people responsible. Exactly. Yeah, and, and when they do acknowledge, this is what happens. No accountability, no punishment on the part of the military. Now, John, uh, what are the international bodies in all of this? I mean, this is happening in broad daylight. What if another country did the same thing to the U.S.? Well, thanks for having me on. And Barry's absolutely right in making the point that international law uh, lacks any means by which to hold countries, the powerful countries in particular, to account for their crimes, and these are certainly best deal crimes committed by the forces of an empire that's entered its mad dog days. Um, there are no international bodies capable of holding the US to account because the US is the major power in the world still. Uh, we live in a world underpinned not by the principles enshrined in the Nuremberg laws or Geneva Conventions, but by might is right. And the US uh, asserts the right to go wherever it pleases and to unleash death and mayhem wherever it pleases, all in the name of democracy and in the name of fighting terrorism. And it's a very sad state of affairs where you have articles in the New York Times that these crimes have been going on for the last 30 years since the demise of the Soviet Union and before when we think about Vietnam, Korea, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, Julian Assange is currently languishing in Belmar's prison for exposing these crimes 10, 11 years ago. And he's the guy who's in prison so, as I said, when his appeal was, uh, uh, the US appeal was upheld in terms of trying to get him extradited there, that we have a, a man exposing the crimes uh, in steel handcuffs and a man committing the crimes, such as Tony Blair in gold cufflinks. This is hypocrisy. You mentioned US intelligence. US intelligence is an oxymoron. US intelligence is found wanting in Iraq and Syria, and we saw the debacle uh, of the evacuation of of Afghanistan of US forces and their Afghan allies in August. They were 20 years in Afghanistan and they still did not understand the country that they were occupying. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some accountability. The countries such as China and Russia and certainly Iran understand the deep clawing hypocrisy that lies at the heart of international affairs because we don't live in, in a world, as I say, that's, that, that, that's held together by international laws that every country adheres to equally or with the same parity of esteem. But we're living in the dying days of an empire, and uh, any empire it does not leave the stage of its own account. It leaves with leaving a great trail of carnage and human destruction in its wake. Okay, for sure. Comments and inside. Barry Grossman, international lawyer and political analyst in Bali. John White, writer and political analyst in Edinburgh.